I just wanted to go over how to create a Phillips head screwdriver. And um, the first thing I would recommend is go online, look for some images, and get a sense of what that looks like, what does a Phillips head look like, how is it built. And once you have a clear, a clear image and a good sense on how it's built, jump into, into the 3D and start building it. Um, so the first thing that I would look at is the head and how it's shaped. So here it's basically just a cylinder and it's flat. Now if we refer to the image, we can see that there is an angle to it. So we want to think about that first. How do we create that kind of, of form at the tip? And then the second thing we want to look at is how do we create that type of curve? And that's basically it. Um, so that's what the reference is for. So the first thing we're going to do is shape the tip. So how do you do that? Um, you can go from one of the side views or the front view and using some type of curve and you can choose whether you want to use this one here control point curve or this one called the curve interpolate i'm just going to use this one here because it gives me three degrees and i like to use that one except the reason why i like to use it is because when you show the points you can see there's exactly two points in between and so what it does is it lets me move them to give curvature to that to that line to shape it into whatever curve I want. Uh, so I'm going to skip that process and just show you uh, the curve, um, the finished curve. I'm going to type in the command, but you can go under um, the menus at the top to do that. I think it's going to be under surface and revolve. And then we want to go to the center of the screwdriver. So I'll go from the right view. And we're revolving around this axis, which in this case is the X axis. Accept, and we're going from 0 to 360 degrees. So press Enter again. And we'll get this. OK, so now from that point, we should be able to use the trim command and again I like to type it in but if you want to you can go here and use the trim command okay and escape select this one and trim whatever goes beyond that one surface so now this is what we get uh, we get something kind of strange but referring back to that image it's it's the type of surface that we that we want. Um, so if we want to, we can also add a small fillet. I'll just do that right away, fillet edge. Um, and we can make it whatever size we want. I'll just type in something like 0.5 millimeters. Let's see what that looks like. And it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work because I forgot to join all of these surfaces. So I'll select everything and just join them. Okay. And then type in the fillet edge same dimension as before select all of these edges accept and that's not really big enough i'll go back and accept and make it twice as much which would be one mm for one millimeter okay so we want it to be like five times as large as it is um, one other thing you might notice is when i go under the fillet edge i click here and you can see it's recognizing this as one edge and then the rest as one other edge. The reason why that happens is because this edge here and this edge don't line up. So a very simple way to fix that is to select the tip of the object, rotate it from the center, and I'll use that view here, the right view. And I'll just rotate the whole thing by 90 degrees. And now both edges line up, which means that if I join all of my surfaces together, once they are joined, it's going to make that fillet edge with one click instead of two clicks, because the edges are actually lining up. So um, I'll go in and change that, escape, um, make sure that the reduce size is much bigger. We'll make it something like three millimeters. 
and it looks much better. So now it's gonna catch a highlight on there, which is kind of nice. Um, also, if you see that kind of stuff where the shading doesn't really make sense, um, there's an easy way to fix that. You can go under your options, and within the options, go to the mesh properties, and you can use custom one, or you can go under smooth and slower. I like to just make custom density of one. Uh, that typically does a really good job with that. Okay, so now we've got the, the base profile uh, for the Philips head. Now what we need to do is cut away from this profile. So we look at this again and we can see there's somewhat of a curve going outwards. So I'm going to start with that, just making some kind of curve. And then I guess that profile is active both from the top view and the left view. If we're going to use this as a profile. So I'll just jump right into it and I'll use the same process using a regular curve. I'll just click on two points, accept, click on the curve, show the points. And if you need more points, what you can do is escape, select the curve, and you might want to rebuild. So you can just type it in a rebuild. And you can choose how many points you want. So if you have three degrees, what it does, it gives you the first point with three additional points. So you might want something like four points. And I would just do degree four uh, points four. That usually works when you do that. Um, and then if we show the points, we'll see that now there's four points in addition to the start point. So now we can start sculpting that curve and figuring out how it's supposed to look. So it looks like it goes deeper into the driver, I mean the screwdriver. So I'll start pulling this curve inwards. And that's basically it. It's that simple. Just pull the points, get it to look the way you think it should look, and then go back to your reference image and make sure it's the way it should be.